We have just arrived in Wapwalpin, PA to meet with switchgrass farmer Will Brando. He is growing, processing, and utilizing his own switchgrass energy, and was nice enough to invite us down for an interview and tour, as well as a switchgrass cooked lunch. Hi, my name is Will Brando, and uh, I live here in Wapwalpin, Luzerne County, Pennsylvania on my 150-acre uh, farm, which about six years ago, I completely planted all the tillable acres with warm season grass. An important aspect of any farming operation is a farmer's access to government assistance as well as other useful resources. We wanted to find out what help Will received when establishing his crop. Uh, I was a computer guy in my previous career and knew very little about farming. I looked at emus, I looked at llamas, I looked at buffalo. And then I went to Bloomsburg Energy Fair at the Bloomsburg Fairgrounds. And I met a conservation guy there, biologist, and he was talking about switchgrass. And he came to visit me at the farm. And the next thing you know, I was applying for a WIP grant, Wildlife Habitat Improvement Program and they gave me funding to plant 15 acres of the farm in switchgrass. Then I applied for a QIP grant and they gave me funding to plant 25 acres of the farm. So between the two, we planted all 40 tillable acres of the farm um, with conservation grants. And my thought was that switchgrass could become a cash stream for a rural farmer. I initially thought that the cash stream was going to come from turning the grass into fuel pellets. I would go to farming school every Sunday after church, and so the local farmers didn't want me to kill myself. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but they and they would teach me how to. They wouldn't even let me drive my own tractor until they checked me out on it to make sure that I knew what I was doing, which was a very good thing. So yeah, I had a lot of help from a lot of people. There was a tremendous amount of interest in in what I was doing. So when I stop growing switchgrass, somebody is going to really benefit from the, from the switchgrass. They have found that the fields that contain warm season grasses are fantastic for growing food crops afterwards. While walking around, we noticed that there were multiple varieties of grass growing in the fields. We wanted to learn more about the different grass varieties in addition to the seeding process and harvest. Warm season grass is a combination of switchgrass. I use cave and rock switchgrass, big blue stem, and Indian grass with a few wildflowers mixed in uh, as per the conservation department. Well, the biologist from NRCS uh, was on site when we did the initial planting, and he taught me how to use the equipment. We planted it with a no-till drill. In other words, I didn't plow the ground first. The only thing I did was to put some weed killer down in the fall and then weed killer again in the spring. Switchgrass seed is not that expensive. I put seven pounds to the acre and one pound of big blue and one pound of Indian grass along with a quarter pound of wildflower seed. Um, the switchgrass is about seven dollars a pound. The big blue and Indian grass is about three dollars a pound. And the most expensive seed is the wildflower seed. That's $25 a pound. The second year, I did my first harvest. I don't harvest this until the spring. I let it sit in the field all winter long. But by the time I harvest, it's totally brown. There's nothing left in it. It's just the shell of the, of the early plants. And all the nutrients that everything was in it has drained back into the soil. It's for that reason that, that I don't have to fertilize. And besides, I leave quite a bit of the crop behind in the field to decompose and, and add to the soil. So I cut it with a flail chopper and I end up with eight to 12 inch pieces that I then bale in either round bales or now I'm baling them as, as square bales as well. Most guys that, that farm, um, that could put this in to heat their homes or their barns or whatever, uh, already have tractors and haying equipment that, that would do the job. You don't need special equipment to, to harvest. I just had no equipment. After I get it back to the farm, then I start the pelletizing process. I take my tractor with a front end bale spear on it. I spear a bale 
and I bring it over and I put it over top of this and drop it right in. This rotates and down in the bottom of it are knives. Those knives spin at a high speed with a fan on, on it and, and the, the pieces of the bale that are cut off come out this chute. And from this chute they go right into the hammer mill. The hammer mill has a quarter inch screen inside of it and the material is ground up small enough to go through that screen, comes into the fan portion, shoots up this tube and into my homemade silo. The material comes out all ground up, the perfect size to go into the pellet mill. It's almost a dust. Given that the switchgrass fuel market is still developing, Will has been looking into alternative markets for his switchgrass products, at least until the fuel market picks up. He told us about some of the obstacles he faces and how he tries to make a profit. The major obstacle, I think, is perseverance. I've been doing this six years. It'd be a lot easier growing corn or soybean or potatoes, but I believe in the, the concept of alternate energy and I can grow a crop in 70 days. Um, and I'm getting three to, between three and four ton per acre of the, the grass coming off. For the time being, I see the market for switchgrass in, in the area of mulch and bedding. Because those are two things that people already have a need for. They're buying straw already. My advantage here is that Luzerne County doesn't have a whole lot of grain farming. These bales right here are in here for a guy who raises cattle. He loves the stuff because it's so absorbent, it, it soaks up everything that the, that the cows lay down. I'm, I'm selling it to uh, people who want to put it on their gardens as mulch. It works fantastically well as a, as a ground cover mulch. Um, I have Five Mountain Market up in Shikshini. Uh, they sell it for me as a new product. They, they're, they're real pleased with it. They're using it for, for dog pens, um, I've got chicken farmers who are raising chickens for eggs. They come and get the stuff as chicken bedding. Uh, they had been using sawdust before, but with sawdust, they can't, they can't dispose of it into a compost pile. They have to sort of send it out with the garbage or put it in a special place because sawdust has an acidic quality to it. Whereas the switchgrass is great for the soil, works great on the garden. They can take their, their chicken poop and the switchgrass together and put it right directly onto their garden. We asked Will if he had any advice for farmers looking to grow switchgrass for bioenergy. Are there any factors involved with burning switchgrass as a fuel? It's really important that when you plant switchgrass that you purchase quality seed. I got my seed from Ernst Seed Company out of Meadville. Ernst Seed is high quality and I had a friend who planted some switchgrass, didn't buy his seed from Ernst trying to save some money. and. Unfortunately, uh, he didn't get the germination from it that I got from my Ernst seed. Well, my, my first piece of advice is don't jump in with both feet. Uh, the market is not completely there yet, at least from the standpoint of alternative energy for, for, for fuel. People don't accept switchgrass as a viable fuel yet. It's different. People are reluctant to change. If they're burning wood, I mean, they're, they're concerned with staying warm in the wintertime. And if, if their pellet stove is working just fine with wood, why in the world would they switch, take the chance and switch over to switchgrass? Um, take the chance of being cold. I understand where they're coming from. It's gonna take a while for me to convince people that switchgrass is a good fuel. It's easy to convince people that switchgrass is a good mulch. Because they're already familiar with straw. The big difference between burning wood and burning switchgrass is the ash content. Wood has 1% ash, switchgrass has 4% ash. Now, on the face of things, that doesn't sound like a big difference, 1% versus 4%. But in practical application, it makes all the difference in the world. I, if I'm burning wood, cord wood, I empty my ash pan on my stove every other day. If I'm burning switchgrass or switchgrass pellets or switchgrass briquettes, I empty my ash pan twice a day. For a lot of people, that ash content is a hindrance to why they wouldn't burn switchgrass. Didn't bother me to go down and do that. It's kind of cool to be burning my own fuel.
I'd like to introduce you to Iroquois Roy. My, uh, my father left him here when this big spruce tree that used to be here was taken down in a storm. He brought in a wood carver and had, had this Indian carved out of the trunk of that spruce tree. He left his mark on this property by doing so. I hope to leave my mark on this property with my switchgrass and teaching people how I did what I did and helping them to avoid the mistakes that I've made. Um, I'm not sure who has the better investment in the property, my father with his Indian or me with my switchgrass. I hope it's me. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you, you taking the time to, to talk with me about it and share the, share the information. Good. Maybe that's how I'll make money with switchgrass. Turn them, maze. Make it's a right. Halloween maze. Oh. Yeah, I could go run through with a pitchfork. <laughs> so, uh, next question.